Hello, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. God loves me. God loves me. In my Bible book it says that God loves me. There you are, children. I have been waiting to tell you this wonderful story from the Bible. I hope today's story is as wonderful as the rest. Absolutely. You're going to love this one. But do listen carefully. We promise, we promise. Today, the story I'm about to tell you is about Joseph's wonderful coat. Jacob had 12 sons from his two wives, Rachel and Leah. Of his 12 sons, he loved Joseph the most. When Joseph became 17 years old, his father gifted him a very special and beautiful coat for his birthday. It was made out of many colored threads and had long sleeves. It was a very special coat which was normally only given to the eldest son. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father had given him the special coat, they were very jealous and angry. Now Joseph would often have nice and wonderful dreams and he could almost always understand what each dream meant. Once he told his brothers the latest dream that he had had, he said, I dreamt that all of us were tying up bundles of wheat that we had harvested. While mine were straight and standing, yours bowed down to mine. His brothers were very angry. They said, Does that mean that you will rule over us? The dream made his brothers extremely angry and they also started hating him a lot. Joseph very soon had another dream. In this dream, the sun, the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to him. He rushed to his father to tell him all about his dream. As he told his dream to his father, Jacob got very angry and said, Son, do you really think that one day your mother, your brothers and I will bow down to you? This made Joseph very sad since he was just telling them about a dream he had had and he loved his brothers and his parents very much. Now that I am done with the story, I'm going to ask the question. What did Jacob gift Joseph when he turned 17? Oh, I know, I know. He gifted him a multicolored coat. That is absolutely right. Okay, children, I will tell you a very sad story today. This is the story of how Joseph is sold to merchants. There was once a boy named Joseph who was given a wonderful coat of many colors by his father for his birthday. But his brothers were jealous of Joseph and his beautiful coat, so they planned to get rid of him. One day, Joseph's brothers had gone to a far away mountain with their sheep. So Jacob sent Joseph to see if his brothers needed anything. As Jacob was climbing the mountain, his brothers saw him from far away and thought of a way to get rid of him. They thought of killing him and throwing him into a well and telling their father that a wild animal had attacked and killed Joseph. The eldest brother, Reuben, however, said, Dear brothers, let us not kill him. Let us throw him in the well, where he will die of hunger in a few days anyway. Reuben did not want to kill his brother at all. In fact, he planned to save him later. The brothers agreed to Reuben's plan. As soon as Jacob came, they got a hold of him, took off his special coat and 
pushed him into the well. Then they all sat down to eat. As they were all eating, some merchants came by carrying spices that they were planning to sell in Egypt. Seeing the merchants, one of the brothers had an idea. He said, Instead of killing Joseph, let us sell him to these merchants. In this way, we will not be killing him. After all, he is our brother. The others agreed. They then pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him to the merchants. When the brothers returned home, they showed their father Joseph's special coat, which they had soaked in goat's blood to make it look like Joseph was attacked by a wild animal. Now for the question, children. Which of the brothers did not want to kill Joseph, but save him later? Let me think, Holy. Was it Reuben? Yes, indeed it was Reuben. Very good, Freckles. Once upon a time, there was a man named Joseph. Unfortunately, Joseph's brothers hated him because they were jealous of him. So they sold him off to a merchant called Potiphar and told Jacob, their father, that Joseph had been killed by wild animals. Now Potiphar was an important man in the king of Egypt's court. He was in charge of the royal guards. Potiphar gave Joseph some work in his house. Soon Joseph became so good at it that Potiphar put him in charge of his house. This made Potiphar's wife jealous. She knew Joseph was special and she did not want him in her house. She told her husband lies about Joseph, so he was sent to prison. In the prison, the jail keeper saw that Joseph had some special qualities, so put him in charge of the prisoners. Among the prisoners were the king's butler and baker. One day, both of them had strange dreams and went to Joseph to know about them. Joseph said, Tell me your dreams. Maybe I can understand them. The butler said, In my dream, I had three bunches of grapes and squeezed them into the king's cup for him to drink. What could it mean? Joseph said, huh. Three bunches means three days. Within three days, the king will forgive you and you will leave the prison. The baker said, I, I, I was carrying three baskets of pastries for the king, but on the way, birds came and pecked them. Joseph replied, I'm sorry, this means that you'll die in three days, and the king will not forgive you. Just like Joseph had said, the baker was not forgiven, and the butler was. The butler went back to work for the king and forgot all about Joseph. So, here is the question. Other than Joseph, who else had the king sent to prison? Oh, I know this one. It was the butler and the baker. That's right. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Okay. But I will ask a question at the end. So listen carefully. We promise we will. A young man, Joseph, was sent to prison by the king of Egypt for no fault of his own. He lived in the prison for two years. One day, the king had a very strange dream. He dreamt that seven fat cows came out of a river and ate all the grass in the fields. Then seven thin cows came out of the same river and ate the seven fat cows, but stayed as thin as before. The king was confused. He called all his clever ministers, but none of them could understand what the king's dream meant. The king's butler, who had spent some time in prison with Joseph, said, Your Highness, when I was in prison, there was a man who understood my dream. It turned out what he told me was true. He is very wise. Maybe you should ask him. So Joseph was called. After the king had told him his dream, Joseph said, Your dream is the path to the future. The seven fat cows you saw are seven coming years when you will have a good harvest. However, the seven years after that will be dry and there will be no rain. So I think you should start storing the extra harvest for the next seven years without rain. 
The king was very impressed. He said, "You are truly wise." Joseph said, "My God speaks through me. I only say what He tells me." The king was so happy with Joseph that he made him the highest officer, only second to the king himself. So Joseph was very rich. He wore expensive clothes, moved around in chariots, and people bowed to him in respect wherever he went. Now I will ask you the question. I hope you were listening carefully. How many years did Joseph live in the prison? I can answer this. Joseph lived in the prison for two years, right? Yes, that is right. Okay, this is a happy story of Joseph. Who sees his family again after a long time? A young man, Joseph, had been sold off as a slave by his brothers. He ended up in Egypt in prison. Now Joseph had helped the king of Egypt understand a dream he had had. Because of this, Joseph was made a very important man in Egypt. The king had dreamt that there would be seven years of good harvest. Followed by seven years of no rain at all, and like in his dream, the following seven years saw a good harvest, and there was a lot of food. Joseph was put in charge of properly storing all the extra food in every region of Egypt. The following seven years saw no harvest at all. While the regions around Egypt had problems, Egypt had enough food. Soon, people started moving to Egypt to buy food. Among these people were Joseph's brothers. When Joseph saw them, he recognized them immediately, but they could not. Joseph accused them of being spies. They said they were not, but Joseph refused to believe them till they got their youngest brother Benjamin as proof. Joseph said that because he really wanted to see his brother Benjamin again. His brothers soon came back to Egypt with Benjamin. As they were leaving the palace, Joseph slipped a silver goblet into Benjamin's bag. He told the palace guards to arrest his brother and charged him with stealing from the palace. Joseph ordered, "This thief will stay in Egypt as a slave." The other brothers pleaded. No, please don't do that. Our father will be heartbroken. Please take one of us instead. On hearing his father's name, Joseph was sad. He could not pretend any longer. He told his brothers who he really was and asked them to bring Jacob to meet him as soon as possible. So Jacob and the whole family came to Egypt. Now for my question. What was the name of Joseph's youngest brother? We know, we know. His name was Benjamin. That is right. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Come, kids. I have already decided which story I'm going to tell you today. Yay! Let's not waste any more time, Holy. Go on with the story. All right. Joseph had no idea that his brothers were so jealous of him. He was confused as to what was happening to him. Why did his brothers sell him off, and why was he traveling to Egypt with these strange people? But little did he know that things were about to get worse for him. The moment the traders reached Egypt, they put up Joseph for sale. He went on from being the favorite son of Jacob to a lowly slave. A man named Potiphar bought him as a slave among many others, and gave a good price for him, as he was a young, strong, and good-looking boy. Potiphar was rich, powerful, and an important man in Egypt, as he was the captain of the guards in the king's palace. Joseph was put to work in Potiphar's house. He worked very hard. He did every single job he was asked to do and did them efficiently. At times.
times he wondered why his own brothers did something as terrible as selling him into slavery. But he never complained. He knew God was with him. He gained strength from knowing that God was watching everything that was happening. God blessed Joseph. Potiphar noticed how hardworking, honest, and respectful Joseph was. Soon, Joseph became Potiphar's favorite and was put in charge of all the slaves who worked for him. Joseph was not only in charge of the household chores, but also played an important part in Potiphar's business deals. All the responsibilities that were given to Joseph showed how much Potiphar trusted him with his home, possession, and family. Joseph looked after the field workers and those who worked in taking care of the animals. Under Joseph's supervision, everything at Potiphar's home ran smoothly. Potiphar did not have to worry about anything. Joseph took care of everything. Everything was going well for Joseph, but little did he know that things were going to get worse for him. I hope you kids like the story. No doubt about it. What's the question? Tell me and I'll tell you everything correctly. <laughs> so the question is, who bought Joseph as a slave? Potiphar! That's right! Great! I was eagerly waiting for you kids. So, today's story is about Joseph's unusual dreams. Joseph was hated by his brothers because every time they misbehaved, Joseph would go and report everything to their father Jacob. This got them into trouble many a times. However, Joseph did not do that intentionally. He wasn't aware of their hatred towards him. One day, Joseph had an amazing dream. Instead of keeping it to himself, he went and told his brothers everything about the dream. Brothers, I dreamt that we were all out in a field tying bundles of grains, and suddenly my bundle stood all tall while all of yours circled around it and bowed. Wasn't that amazing? The dream made them hate Joseph even more. They were not at all happy about it. So you think one day you're going to be our king? <laughs> <laughs> they ridiculed Joseph and laughed at him. The next night, Joseph had another dream. And in the dream, the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to him. He went and told his brothers and his father about the dream. This time, Jacob did not like the dream either. So you think your mother and I are going to bow down to you? Jacob asked. Even though Jacob did not appreciate the dream, he did not hate Joseph like his older brothers. Instead, he sat and wondered the real meaning of the dream. Soon after Joseph's two dreams, Jacob sent his sons, except Joseph, to take his flocks to a field near the town of Shechem. They were gone for quite a while, and Jacob had not heard of them. So he sent Joseph to look for his brothers. When Joseph got to Shechem, he did not know where to find his brothers, and he wandered here and there, looking for them. A man noticed Joseph and thought that he was lost. He asked Joseph what he was looking for. I'm trying to find my brothers and their flocks. Joseph answered. Have you seen them anywhere? Yes. The man answered. I saw them taking the flocks to Dothan. Joseph thanked the man and headed for Dothan to find his brothers. And when he went there, Joseph's life took a whole new turn. Wow! That was a wonderful story, Holy. Ha ha ha! Oh, Gumbo, you really need to stop eating all the time. Anyway, the question for today is, 
Where did the man say Jacob's sons had taken the flocks? Dothan. Absolutely correct, Freckles. You are a good little girl. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the Lord.